In the previous video, I mentioned that photosynthesis had two distinct parts, the light-dependent reaction and light-independent reaction. The main purpose of the light-dependent reaction is to turn an ADP molecule and an inorganic phosphate molecule into ATP, which is shown by this top equation here. Its second function is to solicit the hydrolysis of water into H plus ions and O2 molecules. The light-dependent reaction takes place inside the thylakoids. The thylakoids have few adaptations for this function, the first of which is that they contain a photosynthetic pigment, which is necessary for the light-dependent reaction. Secondly, they have a large surface area for the attachment of these molecules, as well as en electron carriers and enzymes, which carry out the light-dependent reaction. Also, there's a network of proteins inside the thylakoids, which allow precise attachment of chlorophyll molecules, which increases the amount of light absorbed. The granule membrane also has enzymes attached them, which help manufacture C ATP. This is namely ATP synthase molecules. And also, we heard from the first video that chloroplasts also contain, contain DNA and ribosomes, so they could quickly and easily manufacture the proteins needed for the light-dependent reaction. As previously mentioned, the light-dependent reaction turns ADP and PI into ATP. The way it does this is light strikes a chlorophyll molecule. This raises the electrons in the chlorophyll to another energy level. It excites them. They get excited so much that they are ejected from the chlorophyll molecule and then they're taken up by an electron carrier. These stars are the electron carriers. Um, in this, it's best to know that the chlorophyll in this process is oxidized, which is the loss of electrons, and the electron carrier is reduced, which is the gain of electrons. The electrons are passed down this chain of electron carriers, losing a bit of energy each stage. This energy is used to make the equation ATP plus PI goes to ATP happen, so this energy is used to produce ATP. At the end of this process though, the, after the electrons have been ejected from the chlorophyll, the chlorophyll is, um, is deficient of electrons, so these need to come in from somewhere. To recap, the photolysis of water is when a water molecule is broken down into hydrogen ions, oxygen atom, oxygen molecules, and electrons. We know from the end of the, the first, the ATP production, that the chlorophyll molecule at the end of the electron transport chain is deficit of electrons. So when the H2O breaks down, its electrons are accepted by the chlorophyll and it reduces the deficit. The oxygen produced by photolysis of water is a waste product and is given out. Obviously, as humans, we're glad of this because we need the oxygen to live. The H2O molecule also produces an H, H plus ions. So at the end of these two steps, we're left with an H plus ion here and an elect and electrons here. I should say H plus ions here. Both the electrons and the H plus ions are taken up by the electron carrier NADP. These react to form reduced NADP, or it may be written as NADPH is the H. When things reduce, it can be defined as the gain of electrons or the gain of H plus ions. So we get NADPH. Should be a P there. NADPH. This NADPH is important because it's a further potential source of chemical energy to the plant. It's also used in the light-independent reaction. To summarize, the light-dependent reaction yields two important products. ATP and NADPH.